Rural agricultural environment is the platform of biodiversity. Plants, trees, animals and birds etc. get equal importance here with man. Cattle, goat, sheep, chicken are the important members of farm family. Country chickens were very common in the villages earlier but now are seen rarely due to the popularity of broiler chicken in rural areas. Even the village goddesses like Mari and Masti are getting these broilers only as offering. Improved standard of living and lifestyle of rural people, commercial broiler farms in every village etc. have contributed a lot for the situation. Commercial layer eggs are being used for medicines also. We do not know whether this is right or wrong, but the changeover is quite evident. People keep on searching for different and better tastes. Broiler chicken does not taste good for many after decades of eating it. They prefer country chicken now. The commercial poultry farms are also in search of alternatives due to the monopolistic approach of integration companies. Poultry scientists are working hard on country birds to bring in diversity in poultry farming. Due to all these efforts, country birds are coming to the mainstream. This shift is quite evident in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and in few other states. Of course, these traditional birds are not the competitors for commercial poultry birds. Instead, they add better options in the menu of non-vegetarians. In Tamil Nadu, these country birds are being reared on commercial scale already. This documentary film by Yor Shramajeevi explains everything on country chicken and turkey farming. Poultry farming is a big industry now. It is a livelihood for 30 lakh people in the country. The annual turnover is 35,000 crore rupees. India stands in the second position in the world in poultry egg production and in fifth place in poultry meat. But this is the achievement of commercial poultry birds. As of now, the contribution of country chickens is very less. But now these birds are coming to the mainstream and getting commercial importance. Integration companies started operating exclusively for country birds. Now we are in a poultry farm near Tirpur of Tamil Nadu. This is no way lesser to any commercial broiler farm. The only difference is the multiple colors of the birds. Let us study the country chicken first. There is no particular named breed in this. The size and type of the bird varies from region to region. But still, a seal is a more common breed. These birds are categorized into three types. Like small, medium and large. Small type grows up to 1 kilogram. The medium breed is up to 1.5 to 1.7 kilogram and large type gain up to 2.5 kilograms. Identifying the difference among them is easy. The small types start laying eggs by the 20th week, the medium breed by the 25th week and the large type gives egg by the 30th week. These are all multicolored attractive birds. There are no separate breeds for egg and meat. Poultry scientists have bred hybrids by crossing pure country chicken and exotic breeds. They are Giriraja, Girirani, Vanaraja and so on. These birds gain 3 to 4 kilogram body weight and produce more number of eggs with low cost management. But these are good and limited to the kitchen gardens and not adapted yet by commercial farms. Hence, we have considered only the pure country chicken for this documentation. Traditional country chicken is let out for grazing. It eats insects, seeds, earthworms and tender leaves of grass and weeds. Grains are fed in addition. Growth rate of these birds is very less. It takes 5 to 6 months to gain 1 to 1.25 kilogram body weight. But the taste and flavor of the meat of this naturally grown chicken is excellent. Slow growth and grazing add quality apart from its genetic composition. These chickens become colored broilers if fed completely with ready-made poultry feed. This is the opinion of the consumers and chicken shopkeepers. Commercial broiler chicken 
has more fat and average taste, whereas country chicken has less fat and more taste and flavor. Country chicken farming is limited only for meat production. Commercial layers produce 240 eggs per year, whereas the country birds give hardly 70 to 80 eggs. Layer egg is milky white and the average weight is 50 grams. Country chicken egg is pinkish in color and weighs 40 grams. Cost of production of country chicken egg is almost 15 rupees per egg. The small eggs, which are not useful for hatching, are sold in the supermarkets for 6 to 8 rupees. Hence, country chicken farming for egg production cannot be a viable option. Country chicken has no patented breed like commercial poultry birds. Hence, anyone can go for breeding and chick production. At least one breeding farm per district will run and will enable small farmers to go for its farming. Nabard provides soft loan up to 30 lakhs for country chicken breeding. Here we give brief explanation of country chick production for breeders. Here one has to maintain breeder stock of cocks and hens continuously. Birds with desired characteristics are brought from other farms or from countryside. For small numbers like 50 or 100, deep litter system of rearing on the floor will do, but the fighting between cocks is a major problem. Birds damage the eggs if the collection is delayed. Hence, the breeders with large number of hens and cocks go for cage system like commercial lair farm. These birds are fed with poultry feed, with balanced nutrition to achieve maximum egg production and healthy chicks. Vaccines, medicines, vitamins, etc. are given to avoid any health problem. Cock to hen ratio of 1 is to 10 for deep litter system and 1 is to 20 for cage system is advisable. In this farm, automatic feeder and water line with nipples are in use. Natural crossing takes place in deep litter system of rearing. But in cage system, artificial insemination is followed to get fertilized eggs. Glass tube with valve-like mouth is used for the collection of semen. Wash the tube and collect the semen in this method. One tube of semen is sufficient to inseminate 10 hens. Experienced persons can select the hen ready for mating by hand checking. Then insemination is done like this. Collection and transfer of semen should be over within 10 minutes. Otherwise, the viability comes down and the rate of fertilization will be less. Hens are inseminated once in two days. Collect the eggs two to three times a day. It may be stored for three days in cool open place. It keeps good for 10 to 12 days in AC at 19 degrees centigrade temperature. This farmer takes the eggs to the hatchery once in a week. For 10 to 20 hens, a hatchery is not necessary. But this kind of big farm needs incubator for good hatching. Incubation period is 21 days. Day-old chicks are injected with 0.2 to 0.5 ml of vaccine against marax or big liver disease. Feed is not necessary for these small chicks for two to three days. The yolk inside will melt and release energy. Hence, chick can be transported to any distance within 72 hours. Hatching percentage in commercial hatchery is 60 to 65. One can get even 70 to 80 percent hatching with better handling of eggs in all stages. These hatcheries charge five rupees per egg for hatching. Breeders sell these day-old chicks for 25 to 35 rupees to farmers. Hens give good number of egg for two to three years under systematic management. But cocks are changed after one year to avoid inbreeding. Now let us study the management of country chicken for meat production. First stage is called brooding. Day-old chicks are kept at the rate of 10 chicks per square feet. Provide 98 degree Fahrenheit temperature at the beginning. That is one watt for each chick. Even wood charcoal pots are also in use as a source of heat. 
If the temperature is more, the chicks move away from the source of heat. The chicks heap near the pot or bulb if the heat is less. With this observation, adjust the amount of heat provided. Reduce the heat at the rate of 5 degrees Fahrenheit once in 3 days. This brooding is for 8 days. Put paddy husk and paper on the ground for these chicks. Boiled drinking water is mixed with electrolyte powder, vitamin B complex, mild antibiotic and glucose. Chicks are fed with chick mash. Give enough attention during brooding. Chick mortality is 8 to 10 percent. After 8 days, shift these chicks to the bigger shed at the rate of 5 chicks per square feet. Regular broiler sheds are in use for these country birds. Let the height of the shed be 10 to 12 feet in the middle and 7 to 8 feet on either sides. Let the side wall be for 2 feet and mesh for remaining height. This allows free air circulation inside the shed. Let the roof be of AC sheet or GI sheet. Putting straw on the roof in the summer will reduce the heat inside. Mud floor in the shed is better since it absorbs moisture. But many farmers go for cement floor for easy management. Paddy husk is the better bedding material, but it is very costly now. Hence, these farmers depend on coconut coir pith or groundnut shell. Let the litter be dry always. Remove the bedding after selling grown-up birds. Clean the shed, spread lime powder on the floor and give whitewash to the walls. Spray the shed and floor with 0.5% melathion. Fumigation with formalin may also be carried out. Clean the mesh with gas burner. Put bleaching powder to the overhead water tank. Put a new batch of chicks after 15 days of these cleaning work. In brief, the shed should be free from insects and pathogen before the entry of new batch of chicks. Extend the floor space for the chicks according to their growth. Each grown-up bird needs one square feet space. Scrape the bedding once in a week to avoid flaking and retention of moisture. Otherwise, it gives scope for the development of fungal pathogen. There are two methods of rearing of country chicken. First one is the intensive system. Big farms like this feed the bird only with poultry feed. Feed is prepared with low protein formula. Starter feed is put from the beginning up to 25 days, pre-finisher from 25 to 50 days and finisher feed afterwards. Commercial broiler feed is costly and these country birds gain weight very fast. But these birds should grow slowly to produce good meat. Hence, commercial layer feed is used for these birds. One feeder and one waterer is enough for 25 birds. Feed is given thrice and water twice a day. These birds feeding only ready feed gain 1 to 1.5 kilogram body weight in 90 to 95 days and are sold at this stage. It fetches 130 to 140 rupees per kilogram live weight. It is said that the country chicken, depending totally on ready feed, will be just like broiler in taste. However, lakhs of birds are being reared and sold in this method itself. Another method of rearing of country chicken is semi-intensive system. Here, the birds are fed only with ready layer feed for one month in the beginning. Later on, each bird is given 30 grams of feed per day and the rest is the green herbage. Many farmers use rice, ragi, sorghum, maize and other grains instead of ready feed. Tender grass, sesbania, azola, etc. are fed as green feed. This farmer is using the grass grown earlier for cows. The grass is cut into a smaller size in this chaff cutter and fed. Birds are willingly eating this grass pieces. Each country chicken consumes 3.5 kilograms of feed in 4 to 5 months. Only 2 kilograms of feed is sufficient if the green is fed. Farmer saves the cost on feed to that extent. But these birds take 4 months to gain necessary weight for culling. Many farmers leave the birds in the open farm for grazing instead of feeding green in the shed. Here, the bird needs five months to gain weight. But the taste of the meat will be the best and is the same as that of the village bird. 
Hence, it gets 160 to 170 rupees per kilogram live weight. Many poultry scientists opine that the birds cannot digest the grass or greens, but others say that the green turns into many byproducts and used by the bird system, even if it is not fully digested. The grazing birds eat insects, earthworms, seeds, and fruits along with the greens and grow healthy. This method of rearing is suitable for most of the farmers with big farms. Let us study the other aspects of management now. Intensive farmers go for de-beaking at 20th and 45th day stage. Beak is burnt to make it blunt like this with the help of electric equipment. This is to avoid the damage while fighting between birds. Raniket vaccin is put through the eye and nostril by the 5th day. IBD vaccin is given by the 15th day and Lasota by 35th and 65th day stage. Liver tonic is put at 4th to 5th week stage. This country chicken need not be given these many medicines, but the big farmers are not ready to take a chance and risk. Deworming once in two months is necessary, irrespective of the feeding system. Pipergin or albendazole are mixed in drinking water for the purpose. According to the poultry scientists, vaccine for raniket and marax disease and deworming are enough for these country birds. Inject marax vaccine to day-old chicks. Put raniket vaccine through the eyes by the fifth day in drinking water by the fourth week and through injection when the body weight of the bird is 750 grams. Spread the lime powder on the litter once in a month in the summer and once in a week in humid season. This reduces the ammonia smell and keeps the bed dry. This avoids the growth of pathogens. Country chicken farming will not bring extraordinary profit, though it fetches double rate compared to commercial broiler, needs double time to gain weight. Cost of production is less, but each bird weighs a maximum of 1.5 kilogram in large-scale farming but it has minimum health problem and risk, less work compared to commercial poultry farm. Country chicken gets local demand without the help of integration companies. This is profitable as a subsidiary enterprise with routine agriculture. Variation in temperature and climate will not affect these country birds a lot. The manure will be useful for the crops. Grazing birds will bring down the pest population on the farm. Initial investment is negligible in small-scale farming of country birds. The broiler farmers took a lot of trouble in the beginning to make it popular. The same effort is being made in country chicken now. Commercial broiler meat has more fat and average taste. Though the bird weighs 2 kilograms, it is still a chick of 45 days. Health-conscious people are preferring country chicken in recent days. Hence, these farmers are expecting a bright future for country chicken farming. The small farmers are worried about the scale of commercial farming of country birds. They never expect it to become one more broiler industry with coloured birds. The better way is to bring hundreds of small farmers in semi-intensive system together for organised marketing. This country chicken was forgotten, even by the villagers in recent years but our nature has brought it to the mainstream now. Looking at the trend, the country chicken farming will grow on a large scale in the coming years.
Turkey is the second bird of this film. It originates from Mexico. Share of turkey bird is just 2% in the poultry meat production of our country. Population of turkey is increasing in recent years, both for hobby and commercial purposes. We find many commercial farms of turkey in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. It is a popular bird of USA, Canada and European countries. Turkey is called December bird in India since it is consumed on large scale by Christians during Christmas. But nowadays, dabas and big hotels of major cities are using turkey for biryani and other preparations round the year. Thus, the December bird is becoming an all-season bird now. There are three types of turkey bird in our country under cultivation. The large type from CPDO Bangalore, medium type from IVRI and mini type from Nandanam Research Station of Chennai. Among these three, large type is more popular. There are again two breeds in this large type. One is broad-breasted bronze and the other one is broad-breasted white. Turkey likes green fodder. Rearing is easy. Male bird or tom gains 8 to 10 kilogram and female or hem gains 6 to 7 kg in 8 months under good management. Disease resistance of this bird is also good. Hence, the farmers having protected farms can easily go for turkey farming. Common broiler sheds are being used for turkey also. Let the central height be 12 feet and big mesh windows on both sides of the shed. Fresh air circulation is most important for these birds, otherwise it develops respiratory infections. Mud flow is better since it absorbs moisture. Paddy husk, coconut coir pith or groundnut shells are in use as litter material. Let the bed be of 6 inch depth. Feeders and waterers of the poultry farm are used here also. Fully grown up turkey bird needs 3 to 4 square feet floor space in the shed. Turkey attains sexual maturity by 30 weeks of age. Natural mating is allowed here. Let female to male ratio be 5 is to 1. Each female gives 80 to 90 eggs per year. Egg is of large size and weighs 80 grams. There is no particular season for egg laying. Collect the eggs on an hourly basis. Birds may damage the eggs if delayed a lot. It continues laying for 24 weeks. Store the eggs in a cool place for two to three days or it can be stored in a refrigerator for one week. For large-scale poult or turkey chick production, using hatchery is inevitable. This farmer takes the eggs to the hatchery once in a week. Though the eggs are edible and tasty, it is not being consumed in our country. Incubation period for turkey eggs is 28 days. Average hatching is 65 to 70 percent. Day-old chick weighs 50 grams. Commercial hatcheries charge 5 to 8 rupees per egg for hatching. Private breeders sell day-old chick for 40 to 45 rupees to the farmers. Brooding period in turkey poults is 4 weeks. It will extend up to 5 to 6 weeks in winter. Poults need double space in brooding compared to country chicks. Provide 95 degree Fahrenheit temperature in the beginning. Then reduce the heat at the rate of 5 degree Fahrenheit per week for 4 weeks. Let the depth of the water be less. Poults will not eat properly due to nervousness and bad eyesight. Initial 2 months are critical in turkey farming. Chick mortality is up to 6 to 10%. Starvation of the poles is a major problem, hence take enough care for feeding. Add 100 ml of milk per litre of water and one boiled egg for 10 poles in drinking water. This is to supplement protein and energy. Keep coloured marbles in the feeders and waterers to attract the poles. Green herbage may also be put after cutting it into small pieces. Put paddy husk on the floor. 
Scrape the bed once in two days to avoid flaking. Cover the windows in areas with high velocity wind and during winter. This keeps the atmosphere warm inside the shed. All these precautions bring down the mortality of poles. Increase the floor space according to the growth of the birds. Keep enough number of feeders and waterers. This farmer made a water channel for drinking water. Turkey likes green fodder very much. Birds may be left out for grazing if the farmer has enough space with greens. One acre garden is sufficient for 200 to 250 grown-up turkey birds. Otherwise, fodder may be hanged like this in the shed itself. It may be fed after cutting with chaff cutter. Feed the poles for one month with ready-made poultry feed. In the later stage, it may be fed with 25% feed and 75% green. This brings down the cost of feeding and the bird grows healthy. Grazing land should have enough shade. Grazing turkey bird eats worms, snails, termites and other insects apart from green leaves. Proteinaceous fodders like lucerne, stylosanthus and azola etc. brings down the cost of feeding and the bird grows healthy. Feeding 30 to 40 grams of shell grit per bird per day will supplement calcium and strengthen their legs. Turkey bird can be chased in the shed with a stick in hand. It can be caught easily in the dark. Hold the bird with the legs, not by its wings. Bee beaking by third to fifth weeks will reduce the habit of feather picking. Disease resistance of turkey is more than other poultry birds. Put foul pox vaccine by four to five week stage. Maintain hygiene in the turkey shed to avoid coccidiosis. See that the litter is dry always. Put Ranicate vaccine once by 5th to 7th day, again by 4th week and one more dose by 750 gram body weight of the bird. Ensure fresh air circulation in the turkey shed to avoid respiratory diseases. Treat the birds for cold and cough as and when required. Tom or male turkey gains 7 kg and hem or female gains 5 to 5.5 kg by 4th to 5th months under good management. This is the right stage for culling. Many farmers grow turkey in groups and sell in bulk in December. Turkey meat is white, lean and has less cholesterol. Dressed meat percentage is highest in turkey among all poultry birds, that is 80 to 85%. The taste of the meat is also good. Vankoli biryani or turkey biryani is very popular in dabas and big hotels in Tamil Nadu on all regular days. The demand and price is better in December. Turkey fetches 120 to 130 rupees per kilogram body weight of the bird. Shivajinagar of Bengaluru and Goa are the best markets in South India. The country birds are not the alternatives or competitors for commercial poultry chicken. But these birds adapt better to the rural conditions of India. This can be an alternative subsidiary activity with routine agriculture. Introduce these new birds slowly in the local markets. Demand will grow along with the increase in strength of birds on your farm. Support for these country birds is good from the government veterinary department and research stations. Let our young farmers utilize this opportunity. Country bird farming will definitely improve the rural economy in the coming years.